good afternoon. Good afternoon to our president, Dr. Van Wilson, our vice president of learning and student success, Dr. Bill Figge, our associate vice president of academics, Dr. Michael Brown, associate vice president of learning and student success, Dr. Johanna Weiss, our deans and associate deans, our guest speaker, Dr. Yvette Dorsey, our esteemed nursing faculty, nursing students and guests who are present today. I would like to welcome you to our annual nurse pinning ceremony. Give our graduates a whole lot of love. What a pleasure to celebrate this achievement with you. You are uniquely gifted and have skillfully prepared for a life of purpose and impact in the healthcare industry. You And clap because you did it. We will follow the program as ordered and I would like to say congratulations to the baby that's on the corner over here that graduated nursing school as well. Give her some love. Now I will turn it over to Dr. Van Wilson, our interim president for the introduction of the speaker. Dr. Wilson. Four million nine hundred twenty-two thousand six hundred and forty. Let me say that again. Nine four million nine hundred twenty-two thousand six hundred and forty. So after my run this morning, I contemplated, when I had a few minutes, what would I share with this nursing class of 2023? I know my colleagues won't believe this, but I was absolutely speechless. But I did the same thing you did. Whenever you needed an answer, I typed it in the Googler. Nursing. And here's what came up. Sheroes, heroes, unselfish, kind, servants, unrelenting, giving, uplifting, comforting, helpful, and as Dr. Wilson mentioned a few minutes ago, impactful. I was really fixated on that word impact in terms of what does that really mean. So I thought about you in terms of all of the lives that you would end. and thank you for being nurses. Today, we have the absolute honor and pleasure of having Dr. Yvette Dorsey, DNP and RN. Dr. Dorsey has a compelling record of leadership in nursing, academia, and in acute health care. She has been a nurse for over 20 years. Dr. Dorsey started her nursing career as a licensed practical nurse in St. Louis, Missouri. Quickly realizing that nursing was her passion, she went back to school and attended an LPN bridge program at Deaconess 
College of Nursing. Continuing on her educational journey, Dr. Dorsey obtained her BSN from Chamberlain College of Nursing and an MSN from American Sentinel University, where she specialized in nursing education. Furthering her education past graduate school, Dr. Durst Dorsey obtained her doctorate of nursing practice, specializing in healthcare systems. Leadership from uh, healthcare systems leadership from Chamberlain College of Nursing in August of 2016. Dr. Durst Dorsey has worked in some of nursing's most complex and high acuity specialties. As a registered nurse, she worked for eight years in labor and delivery and has over eight years of experience working in critical care. Dr. Dorsey also has a passion for nursing academia where she spent over five years as a lead instructor for medical, surgical, women and newborn health and high fidelity simulation in a hybrid program for both licensed practical nursing students and registered nursing students. Currently, she is working, on the, uh, working as the Administrative Director of Academic Affairs for the HCA Capital Division here in Richmond, Virginia. When she's not caring for her four amazing children, she is following her passion, and that is cooking. Help me welcome to the microphone Dr. Dorsey. Wilson for that. Um, I'm going to put my glasses on here. <laughs> so first of all, graduates, congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone. To the guest and family here, I would like to say thank you for being here on this monumentous occasion. To the nursing faculty, whom I recognize as my peers in the nursing profession, I personally want to thank you for the countless hours you have stood before each and every one of these students in the classroom, delivering key lectures that will guide each and every one of these future nursing professionals on how to critically think and how to use their nursing judgment, which has prepared them for the ultimate test, the National Council Licensure Examination, known as and say it with me, NCLEX. And to our nursing students, before I take this time to deliver a key message that I hope one day you will reflect on, I want you to take a moment to look around you and understand that through all of the peaks and the valleys, tears, high fives in the halls, text messages late at night, to your classmates confirming what was the exam going to cover, to the late nights with those who have children, the books on the table or in the corner of your room, the early morning alarms, the 7 a.m. clinical, and the staff nurses thanking the nursing gods that they have nursing students for the day, to the passing medications for the first time, to helping discharge a patient who gets to go home, to holding a wife's hand whose husband may not have made it through your clinical shift, to wearing a nursing uniform and badge that truly made a difference, to the countless hours of studying, to making Quizlets, which by the way was known as three and a half by five index cards in my nursing days, and to making a true difference to someone who may not have felt their best with you simply by answering the call button, you were able to make their day. And then to wake up and do it all over again, week after week after week. Look at where you are today. You did it. You made it to the last turn of the race. You should be proud of where you are today. Everyone again, let's please give these nursing students a round of applause. We are extremely proud of you for getting to the last turn.
of the race. Now, as I was typing this message to you, I was thinking about how to connect my personal journey and why I became a nurse to having you reflect and consider your own personal journey. I encourage you to hear me, find a connection, and then understand why this profession, and I'm sorry, what this profession has in store for you. And so many lives that you haven't even touched yet. Or for that matter, the future nurses you have yet to inspire. Each of you here today, think to that one day that you said to yourself, I want to be a nurse. I wanna go to nursing school, get my degree, and I'm going to become a nurse. Are you there? Now keep that moment as we go on our journeys together. I knew that I wanted to be in healthcare when I was in the fourth grade. Now I know you are saying, how in the world did I know that when I was just 10 years old? You do realize that was only about 11 years ago, right? But seriously, I knew I was inspired to be in healthcare by, the, by my fourth grade teacher, whose name I cannot forget, Mrs. Hill. Mrs. Hill gave us an assignment and we had to draw the anatomy and the physiology of the heart. Now, when I say anatomy, all of the nursing faculty, and, we, and if we have any anatomy and physiology faculty members here, they definitely can relate. To each of you as nursing students, she had us draw the heart as we know it in the human body. The atrium, the ventricles, the arteries, and the valves, we had to color it according to how the body received deoxygenated blood and exchanged it for oxygenated blood and then how it transferred to the rest of the body. Fourth grade, this is what I was doing. As the year went on, you know that one question that your parents ask every year, year after year through middle school through high school, before you go to college, after you go to college, to me standing before you today, what do you think that one question that I'm talking about could be? Say it with me. What do you wanna be when you grow up? For me, my journey may not be like yours, but as I mentioned, I wanted to do something with medicine. I thought originally I wanted to be a heart doctor. As I recall saying that before knowing what a cardi, I recall saying that before I knew what a cardiologist even was. I knew that my teacher had inspired me to do something that I was interested in, something that I had a passion for. And at that time it was to be a heart doctor. Time went on and unlike a traditional family, my mother was Puerto Rican and English was her second language. She knew none of the sort how to get me into college and not much on how to become a doctor for that matter. But to her credit, she knew how to raise someone who was kind and respectful and took pride in their work. But most importantly, she taught me how to be committed and passionate about your job. Through her long work hours in a machine factory and as a part-time waitress on the weekends at Red Lobster, I remember the dedication that she gave to make sure everyone around her felt cared for. I'll fast slightly forward past high school because we know a lot of prayers were sent up during that time and let's just thank God for that. But I think about that one question, what do I want to be when I grow up? All of my friends at that time, they wanted to go to college, they had their plans written down and were accepted into four-year universities. And here I was, I looked to my left and I looked to my right and all of my friends were away at school thinking, what now? What am I going to do? I started working at a health club called Valley Total Fitness and I remember looking in the paper, reading an ad 
and that said, St. Louis College of Health Careers, LPN classes starting soon. I placed the newspaper ad in my bag, and yes, I did say newspaper ad. And no, I did not screenshot it off Indeed, nor did I click on the link, and nor did I scan a QR code. I put the ad in my bag, and I actually picked up the phone that was connected to a landline, and I called to see how I can go to school to be a licensed practical nurse. Again, trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up, I had amazing mentors and tremendous examples of what I could be when I did. While going to school for my RN, there was this one amazing labor and delivery nurse named Miss Laverne. Miss Laverne, she gave nursing all she could while being a patient with health concerns herself. She would come to work the day after dialysis and would run the labor and delivery unit like the back of her hand. The nurses on the unit had respect for her knowledge. Her patients remembered her when they came back for care and she always showed up. Reflecting on these great nursing mentors that I had to support me on my journey, I want to check in on you to make sure that you are still with me, to make sure that you are thinking about that person or people who have been there for you on your journey to now. Are you still there? You know, all of us here can identify with what brought us here to that one place in our lives that has made a difference, that has aligned our purpose on earth to do something better. I have so many stories about people and situations in my nursing career that have truly made an impact on my life and decisions that I have made as a nurse that I wish we had more time than this one afternoon. As my career has spanned well over 25 years as a nurse, I've almost met, I'm sorry, I've also met some significant patients that truly helped me identify with my why. See, I worked nights as a registered nurse for over 15 years, starting as a newly graduate nurse. And I wanna share with you that those were some of my greatest learning moments. I was able to identify what it meant to work on a team with minimum resources, how to truly pack a lunch and snacks that will last 12 hours, time management, and most importantly, that nursing care does not stop when the sun goes down. Most times that is when the fun is just beginning. I started my career in labor and delivery and I can tell you that I pretty much cried with every delivery. It was one of the best moments in my nursing career. I have been in almost every obstetrical emergency you can read about in your textbooks. I've delivered a couple of babies while waiting on the doctor to arrive, and I've had the privilege of assisting in the operating room. I have been the hand to hold during the moments when a patient felt as if they could not endure the pain. See, for us as nurses, we are there for it all, for all the peaks and the valleys that I mentioned to you earlier. And it is, those, it is with those peaks and valleys that have made me the compassionate nurse that I am today. Being a nursing professional, you have chosen a career that has a tremendous amount of opportunities and an array of specialties. You have the opportunity to work in the infusion centers, helping patients diagnosed with cancer who need your healing touch to deliver their life-saving dose of chemotherapy. There is a such thing as a transplant nurse where you are able to work coordinating life-saving transplants for those who need a new heart or new kidney to continue living. There is the intensive care unit, cardiac care, cath units, and these are just to name a few specialties. But think about this. You chose a profession that once you complete the last turn in the race, that will provide you a world of opportunities. 
have one more impactful story to tell you, and I will try to get through it without crying. But it is not nursing if you don't cry, right? On my journey, as I have mentioned to you, you are going to meet some amazing friends. You are going to find a mentor to help you on your path. And you are going to remember that one patient that no matter where you are in your career, you will be able to tell the story about how they impacted your life and your way and on your way to success, that you will remember it like it was just yesterday. In my previous role as the director of oncology, I had the pleasure of not only leading and mentoring others. But the best part of my job was I was able to round on patients in their room. I was able to take time out of my day to genuinely build relationships with patients and their families. On our oncology unit, we had patients who would frequently come in for chemo treatment and or closer observation that sometimes would go from one day to one week, to one month. But there was this one patient that made a difference in my one year tenure as director. And every time that he would get admitted, I would run to his room to say hello to his wife, who always sat in the chair. He would be leaning over on the bed side table while sitting on the side of the bed and then I would always ask, how's it going? What's the latest? I would get his updates, and then I would always leave the room and say, we got this. His days turned, his days turned from days to weeks to months. This one week, though things were different, he had his own sets of peaks and valleys. And each day I would leave and after rounding, but I would make sure to say, we got this. It was Thursday of the week, of a week, and I had PTO on that Friday for a three-day weekend. But before leaving, I needed to go round on this patient as my staff told me he was not doing well on this particular day. I went in. I talked to him, I touched his hand, I sat down, I hugged his wife. I told him I had a PTO day coming up and that I was so excited about it. I told him I would be back on Monday to see him. And before I left as usual, I said, we got this. He said, don't worry about me. You go on, enjoy your day. He said, don't worry about me. Go ahead and enjoy your day. And off I went. I got a call the next day from my staff that unfortunately he had passed away. I paused, I sighed, I cried, and I asked my staff to transfer me into the room. His wife picked up the phone, and I immediately offered my condolences. The wife was so surprised that I had known even what had happened on my day off, and even that I called. We continued to talk, and before getting off the phone, she said, Yvette, now go do what he said do, and enjoy your day off. We got this. Now, as I leave you with three very important things that you will cross in your nursing career, and that is to identify your why and think about what you want to be when you grow up. One thing to think about is what brought you here today? Let it be what gets you out of bed every day. Think about that one person who has made a difference to you while you were on your journey. And again, who is that person for you? Two, 
I want you to find a mentor, someone who will pour into you and provide you with support and guidance and who will be honest with you while on your journey. And three, think about every day the lives that you will touch, the impact that you will make with a simple touch of the hand, an engaging conversation, and the opportunity to save a life or to help someone transition. But before it all finish, but before it all is done, finish the race, study, and most importantly, cross the finish line. I look forward to calling you my nursing peers, and please know you got this. You got this. Give Dr. Dorsey another hand. Please charge it to my head and not my heart. I failed to recognize Ms. Susan Grannon. She's our Vice President for Finance. Uh, this would not be possible without her and her support, so we say thank you. Um, I'm sorry, just charge it to my brain. <laughs> Thank you so much. We will now follow the program. We'll have recognition of our graduates, and we'll have the presentations of our roses and our pins in that order. Ms. Diane Siner. We are so, we're so proud of you guys. You make us very happy. And I'm personally very happy with the number of students who are going into women's health and children's health. So. If the first group could come on up. Brandy Atkins. Brandy says that Bright Point College has taught her how to be a critical thinker and introduced her to many good friends. She will be studying for the NCLEX prior to moving to California. Jasmine Asensio. Jasmine says, I've enjoyed making new friendships and gaining the knowledge to further my career. Jasmine has accepted a position at Retreat Hospital Emergency Department. Catherine Bean. <laughs> Catherine says, I've made lifelong friendships. She looks forward to obtaining a position as an intensive care nurse. Leanna Bennett. Leanna says she finally learned to kind of be on time. <laughs> she has accepted a position in the Medical Respiratory Intensive Care Unit at VCU. Katie Bishop. Katie learned that when having a bad day, she should not needle people. She has accepted a position at VCU Acute Oncology and Hematology. Amanda Bowman. Amanda is thankful for the lifelong friendships and experiences that have brought her to this day. She has accepted a position in the Progressive Care Unit at Parham Doctors Hospital. Sarah Bracewell. Sarah is thankful for the friendships and connections made through the program. She plans to travel the United States and Europe with her new license. Caitlin Birch. Caitlin says, one positive thing about Bright Point is bonding with your peers and the lifelong friendships made. She has accepted a full-time RN position in the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at Children's Hospital of Richmond, VCU. Drew Danielson. 
She says, during my time at Bright Point Nursing Program, I gained confidence in skills I never dreamed I could do. She has accepted a position in the Tri-Cities Hospital Emergency Room and plans to start her BSN program at Galen College. Brianna Fleming. Brianna says, I made a lot of good connections with students and learned a lot from this cohort. She will be accepting a new grad RN position in the float pool at St. Mary's Hospital. Amy Glover. Amy says, the, BC the BCC nursing program has given me new confidence and I will take with me into my nursing career the these valuable friendships. She plans on interviewing and passing her NCLEX. Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Lindsey is very grateful for the friendships made over the last two years and for the opportunity to positively impact the lives of others. She plans to take her NCLEX in July and begin working as an RN in the pediatric unit with a goal of becoming a NICU nurse. Savon Howard. Savon says, I've made friendships here that will last a lifetime and bonds that will never be broken. She has accepted a position in the CVICU at MedStar Washington Hospital Center in Washington, D.C. Tierra Jones. <laughs> Tierra says, a bright point has provided me with the foundation to become the best nurse I can be, as well as the opportunity to make new friends. She has accepted a position at St. Mary's Hospital specializing in antepartum care. Shauna Kinsey. <laughs> Shauna plans to take the NCLEX in June and has accepted a position in the Surgical Trauma ICU at VCU. Michaela Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Michaela plans to continue her education at the University of Virginia and will be working at a local medical trauma unit. Samantha Lent. Samantha is thankful for the lifelong friendships made and has accepted a position at Henrico Doctors Hospital on the mother baby unit. Megan Marlat. Megan is also thankful for the lifelong friendships she's made here, and it will be interviewing and passing her NCLEX. Brooklyn Cheyenne Martin. Brooklyn plans to take the NCLEX exam and begin interviewing for her RN position. Sadie E. Martin. Sadie says that nursing school at Bright Point provided me with the unforgettable experiences and friendships that will last a lifetime. She plans to take her NCLEX and hopes to begin working in a local mother-infant unit. She looks forward to what the future has to hold. Courtney Miller. <laughs> Courtney says, I will always be grateful for the priceless friendships, the skills, knowledge, and the confidence that Bright Point Nursing Program has helped me to develop. She will be taking the NCLEX and begin interviewing. William Winfield Nelson IV. <laughs> Win says that his professors were awesome and when you were down, they pulled you up. Um, he has plans to apply in the trauma or cardiac ICUs in the Richmond area and all along the southeast coast. Precious Tanyi Oric Ojang. <laughs> Precious says, I am thankful for the friends made while attending Bright Point, as well as all the knowledge and experience I've gained as a student nurse. Her next steps are to take the NCLEX and begin interviewing. She also plans on getting into a bachelor's degree program to further her education. Madison Overgaard. 
During nursing school, Madison made lifelong friends. She has accepted a position at Johnston Willis Hospital on the maternal infant unit beginning in July. Aida Romanovich. Aida says a positive from this program was the lifelong friendships gained. She has accepted a position in the emergency department at St. Mary's Hospital beginning in July. Fernando Jose Ramos. <laughs> Fernando is thankful for the friendships. After the NCLEX, he will look for positions in the Northern Virginia area. Trevor Raley. <laughs> Trevor is thankful for his education to get this degree, and he has accepted a position at the VCU Medical Respiratory Intensive Care Unit. Lauren Parker Reese. Lauren says, I appreciate that I was able to work while completing the program thanks to the hybrid option. She has accepted a position in VCU's step down medicine unit and also hopes to work part time at Bon Secours Community Hospice House, transitioning her role from a CNA to an RN. Anna Saakian. Anna is thankful for her friends she found along the way and ho hopes to pass her NCLEX. Tagreed Saleh Al Assad. Tagreed says, I am grateful for the scholarship and the bachelor's degree co enrollment that Bright Point offered, as well as the positive encouragement and guidance from Ms. Peace, Mr. Kamani, and Ms. Willoughby. Thank you for always seeing my potential. She has accepted a position in the coronary ICU at VCU and plans to continue BSN classes. Amber Sanchez. Amber says that Bright Point allowed her to make friendships she know will last her lifetime. The next step is to pass the NCLEX and accept a position in intensive care unit nearby. Taylor Shores. Taylor is very excited to embark on this journey into nursing. Plans on working in the progressive care unit at Virginia Commonwealth University. Haley Slifer. Haley says she'll be forever grateful for the lifelong friendships made these past two years. She has accepted a position in the Arrhythmia Care Unit at Chippenham Medical Center. Savannah Smith. Anne Marie Shalaya. Anne Marie hopes to work in oncology at the Children's Hospital of Richmond at VCU this fall while finishing her BSN at VCU. Allie Stallcup. <laughs> Allie has met incredible people on her journey. She is accepted a position as a psych RN at Retreat Hospital, uh, Retreat Doctors Hospital. Casey Strickler. Casey has accepted a position at the Cardiac Intensive Care Unit at Henrico Doctors Hospital Forest. James Walton. James says that Bright Point has top-notch clinical instructors. Terry Brown, looking at you. <laughs> he has accepted a job in the Cardiac ICU at Henrico Doctors Hospital. Madison Brooke Webb. Madison has accepted a position at Henrico Doctors Hospital in the Labor and Delivery Unit.
excited. I have the privilege of leading you all in the Nightingale Pledge. It's a token written in esteem of Florence Nightingale, who is considered the founder of modern nursing. Um, would all the registered nurses and licensed practical nurses in the room stand up with us? Graduates, would you stand up please? You have the pledge in your program, so we'll just read it together. Here we go. I solemnly pledge myself in the presence of this assembly to faithfully practice my profession of nursing. I will do all in my power to make and maintain the highest standards and practices of my profession. I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping in the practice of my calling. I will assist the physician in his or her work and will devote myself to the welfare of my patients, my family, and my community. I will endeavor to fulfill my rights and privileges as a good citizen and take my share of responsibility in promoting the health and welfare of the community. I will constantly endeavor to increase my knowledge and skills in nursing and to use them wisely. I will zealously seek to nurse those who are ill wherever they may be and whenever they are in need. I will be active in assisting others in safeguarding and promoting the health and happiness of mankind. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm gonna turn the mic over to Dr. Figgy. Well, good afternoon. If you all would please stand again for one moment. <laughs> up and down, up and down. Uh, but one, we know there's a group behind you and around you that you probably wouldn't have been able to finish this program without their support. And that's your family and friends. And all the kids out there, you're welcome. <laughs> because one, you get your parents back. But two, you got to miss school today. So that's pretty cool as well. But if you could give your families a big round of applause. All right, y'all can be seated again. You're good. And then uh, a group that also provided a lot of care and support. And I know Dr. Wilson uh, gave them a shout out. But I'd like them to, be stand, to stand and be recognized. All of our faculty and staff who are in the audience, if you would please stand and be recognized. So Dr. Wilson, our president, talked about the impact that you all are going to make, have made and are going to make. Uh, Dr. Dorsey, great job of talking about from the nurse's perspective. And, and in my closing remarks, which will be uh, fairly brief, uh, I just want to talk about from the family member perspective of the impact that you make. Uh, I want to introduce you all to Sandy. Uh, Sandy is a caring, kind, compassionate woman. Uh, she allows my brother and I and our respective families and our respective homes to be able to see, sleep soundly at night because she has cared for my mother for the last year and a half every night, literally every night I think except two, from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. She gives her a bath every morning at 6 a.m. My mom wakes up about 2, 3, 4 in the morning, has a cup of coffee, and, and my mom, her health is okay uh, but unfortunately she has COPD and she just can't move around much. And Sandy is there for her, for her time when she needs her. Again, in the middle of the night, that's when mom really wants that service. And the impact that Sandy has on our family and some of the other folks who come in to support my mother in her assisted living facility, it's unbelievable the care that they're able to provide. Now I know that you probably won't be able to get to know your patients like Sandy's gotten to know my mom because I heard some of the jobs that you're gonna have. Uh, some of you are gonna be birthing some babies, right? And so two of my most memorable moments are with nurses who were birthing my kids. Uh, and then also my saddest moment uh, when I lost my father. Uh, I remember when my firstborn uh, came about 
and it was like clockwork. It was like a day at work, not, maybe for me, not for my wife. Um, but it was 8 a.m. My, my wife's water broke at 4.04 p.m. is when Aaron came into this world over 16 years ago. And I remember standing by Kristen. I still remember her name. And, and I, it, was, it was an easy, easy childbirth where I was able to be there standing by her side, Kristen, and to see my baby be born. And again, most memorable day of my life. 19 months later, don't judge, my second kid's born. <laughs> and that one wasn't so easy. Uh, Erica came out and she wasn't breathing. And it was a group of about seven nurses that took her back and did what you do. And all of a sudden she started crying and she hasn't shut up since. And again, a very memorable time. And she ended up taking some time in the NICU, which I know some of you are going to be in there. And now she's a you know, healthy uh, young lady. They grow up very, very fast. As I see a lot of young ones around here, they grow up very fast. And then I remember when my uh, father, hospice, I was with him. He had cancer, uh, unfortunately. And I remember his nurse coming in, his hospice nurse, an hour before he passed. And she just kissed him on the forehead. And she said, I'll see you on the other side. It was the care and compassion of those nurses, of Sandy, of Kristen, and the others who supported my family in that time. That's the care and support you're providing and are going to provide. And I thank you for all the families, the 4.9 million that you're going to touch, the patients and all of their families. I'm sure that's all in combination. You are going to make a difference. And that's the passion and that's the reason you went into this. And so those days where you go and we all have them in our workplaces where we go, why do I do this? All right, just remember that why that Dr. Dorsey said because it's meaningful, it's impactful, it makes a difference. So from behalf of my family, behalf of all of your families, behalf of all the families you're going to touch, I just want to say thank you and best wishes and be safe tonight. Have a good time, but be, uh, but be very safe. All right, congratulations. Well done. Dr. Dorsey, if you could come up, we want to give you a small presentation, a token of our appreciation. On behalf of our president and the president's cabinet, the faculty and staff, we would just like to say thank you for attending and doing a great presentation for our nursing students. It is well appreciated, and we thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I love you. You are amazing. amazing. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming um, to the parents, family, and friends. As Dr. Figgy said, you guys are going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see what you're going to do on this journey called nursing. Remember, nursing is a team sport. You guys have a wonderful day.